What happens in the fearful mind, it starts asking this question, what if? What if this terrible thing happens? What if this terrible thing happens? What if this terrible thing happens? And we generate and we stew within our gut these acids and these fears that literally trick our mind into thinking we can't change. The reason people get stuck sometimes is they're unwilling to push their fears through their discomforts. And the reason it is because they got disappointed, they got hurt, there's an emotional stuck there. And you, all you can do is you just gotta go, I gotta push into those things. Okay, I'm scared of it, but I'm gonna lean into it, I'm gonna push into it, I'm just gonna keep going until I break through. Don't avoid the fear, don't avoid the anxiety, don't avoid the trouble. They're always gonna be there. They're not gonna go away. They're always gonna be there. The question is, are they in control? The question is, are they at the wheel? Or are you at the wheel? Are they captaining your ship? Or you're the captain? Are you playing victim? Or are you playing victor into those things? That's the question. Apply that, push again. Find something you're excited to push against. If you're stuck because of your fears, you need to give yourself permission to push into it and to say, I'm gonna get in the ring again. I don't know how it's gonna go. I'm probably getting punched around a little bit by life because I've been on my ass for a little while, but I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna learn to take the swings. And I'm gonna learn how to fight. I'm gonna get back into this thing and I'll stay in it. I'll get over it. You need to push. The mind is more powerful if you learn to direct it. If you don't direct it, if you don't shape it, if you don't condition it, it'll mess with you. It's a discipline to say, I don't negotiate with myself. I don't negotiate with my fear. You don't have to feel good to do this. I don't give a shit how you feel. I don't give a shit how I feel. I don't feel like doing a lot of things, but I always do it because I train my nervous system to do that. And if you just develop that discipline, it will free you of so much. It'll help you achieve more than the people around you because most people, they want to feel a certain way before they do it. Screw that. Stop the habit of thinking you have to feel good. Do it anyway. Train yourself. Don't negotiate with yourself. The only way through fear is massive action. It's our job to say, I want to stand out. It's our job to say, I want to follow my own bliss. I want to achieve that next level for myself and for my family. And so push. Set up the habits, do the tasks, set the schedule, get the deadline, have a vision for yourself, get out of your own way, handle what's in front of you, and as you do that, you will start to see that you will accelerate. Your success will come faster, and as it does, it will be less likely that you're gonna get stuck again. Get on a roll, it's your time. You're still here, and you get another chance this day to do better and be better. Another chance to become more of who you were created and what you were created to fulfill. Everyone in the world is capable of living outside the role or beyond the roles that they place themselves in, no matter what it is. You're not just a dad. You're not just a banker. You're not just a brother or a son or a convict. It doesn't matter. Like, everyone is bigger, much bigger, infinitely bigger than the roles they place themselves in and is capable of reaching potential greater than anything they could imagine. the life you desire. It's right there in front of you. But in order to achieve it, you must first see it, then believe it, and then you must graciously ask and train your brain to help you execute your vision.
So when you start to focus and you delete distraction from your life and you start to get seriously invested in doing one thing staggeringly well and you practice that one thing over and over, a term to think about is mundanity. You do one simple, seemingly insignificant thing every day around your main skill, and it's very mundane, but small daily improvements over time lead to world-class results. Well, here's what happens in your brain. You start to isolate a single neuro circuit around that skill, and that starts to trigger a certain type of brain cell called an oligodendrocyte, which then releases myelin. Myelin is a fatty tissue that starts to wrap around that single neuro circuit related to that main skill you've been practicing. And when myelin starts to wrap around the brain circuit, what happens is you have accelerated learning times, you can see more quickly, heightened perception, and you'll learn more quickly. And that is really the quote-unquote secret of the great producers. It's not a result of some natural gift, but their daily practice, their relentlessness, and their grit, their work ethic, and their singular focus and sacrifice. A great life is built not by revolution. A great life is built by evolution. Small and steady wins the race. What you do every day is far more important than what you do once every decade. I want you to really think about that idea. What you do every day is simply your life in miniature. And as you live every single day, so you're crafting your life. What you do over the next hours is really building your future. And if you can just get every single pocket of 24 hours right as best as we humanly can, the rest of our life is going to take care of itself. So small wins matter. The scripture says we will eat the fruit of our words. You are planting seeds when you talk. At some point, you're going to eat that fruit. My challenge is make sure you're planting the right kind of seeds. If you want apples, you have to sow apple seeds. If you want oranges, you can't plant cactus seeds, poison ivy seeds, mushroom seeds. You're going to reap fruit from the exact seeds that you've been sowing. In other words, you can't talk negative and expect to live a positive life. You can't talk defeat and expect to have victory. You can't talk lack, not enough, can't afford it, never get ahead, and expect to have abundance. If you have a poor mouth, you're going to have a poor life. If you don't like what you're seeing, start sowing some different seeds. We may not realize it, but we're always feeding ourselves. What we watch, listen to, the people we're around, the thoughts we're dwelling on, that's feeding our inner man. If you go to lunch with people that talk bad about the boss, make fun of a coworker, put down a friend, they're feeding you gossip feeding you jealousy, feeding you disrespect. Here's the key. Whatever you feed is going to grow. You may not like what they're feeding you. You're a nice person. But if you continue to hang around them, before long, you'll be gossiping. You'll be critical. You'll be disrespectful. Why? Because you kept feeding the wrong things. If you're always feeding negative thoughts, thinking, I'll never get well, I'll never meet the right person. You're feeding doubt, feeding mediocrity, feeding fear. If you know exactly what you want to be, you need to spend as much time with people that are actually that already. a fear of failure or a fear of comparison or a fear of judgment stop you from doing what's going to make you great you cannot succeed without this risk of failure you cannot have a voice without the risk of criticism and you cannot love without the risk of loss you must go out and you must take these risks
You don't have the time to waste time because time doesn't wait till you discover your purpose. If you don't know why you was born, time is still moving. And if you discover your purpose at 90 years old, it's too late. You don't know how young you are. <laughs> what if you die in two years? You're pretty old right now. You got two years left. And if you're 50 years old and you're feeling discouraged, well, remember the advice about planting a tree. When's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago or today? So if you're 50 and you feel like life left you behind, well, get started right now. Better late than never. Better late than never. Don't think about time and age so much. It gets people distracted. When the whole world's distracted, you be focused. You have to trust your own voice, your own ideas, your honesty, your vulnerability, and through this you will find your way. You do not have to be fearless. Just don't let fear stop you. Live like this as best you can and I guarantee you will look back on a life well lived. You are capable of greatness in your profession and more importantly in your quality of self. Stay hungry. Stay young at heart. Take those risks. You are going to change the world around you in big ways and in small. But see, anybody, if you want to, can go searching for a good plan, pick it, and start working it. And sure enough, as the time passes, as it surely will, five years from now, ten years from now, then you'll be winding up wearing what you want to wear, driving what you want to drive, living where you want to live, become what you want to become. But now is the time to fix the next ten years. And who can? Anybody. You were created to give life and make a difference with your gift somewhere. That's why you came to this place. You want to improve? You want to get better? You want to get on a workout program or a clean diet? You want to start a business? You want to write a book, or make a movie, or build a house, or a computer, or put together some mobile application? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. You initiate the action aggressively. You go.